Working on a creative campaign on your own comes with a unique set of challenges. You need to brainstorm ideas, design product mockups, design layouts, and maybe even create some videos or animations. Now, you might have some experience and strength in some of those areas, but not all of them. Or maybe you're just not sure what tools to even use to pull it all together. Hi, I'm Garrick, and in this video, in partnership with Leonardo AI, we're going to look at how you can handle all of those steps in one place using Leonardo AI as your all-in-one creative studio. We'll start by developing ideas in flow state, and then mock up our product with Leonardo's powerful AI image generation tools, and then we'll add cinematic motion with its video creation features. If you want to follow along with me, start by pointing your browser at leonardo.ai and sign up for a free account. And once you've signed up, from the homepage, you can click Launch App. Or you can also go to app.leonardo.ai to open up the main Leonardo interface. All right, so for this example, let's say I need to come up with a fall campaign for a brand of coffee that I'm working with. I need to come up with all the visuals myself, and they have to look professional and polished for my client. Let's see how Leonardo can help me with this entire campaign from start to finish. So before we start generating images, it helps to spend a little time developing the overall look and feel of the campaign by coming up with things like the tone, color palettes, and composition of the shots I want to use. That's where Flow State comes in. Flow State is Leonardo's built-in brainstorming tool that helps you quickly explore different creative directions, kind of like a visual ideation board where you can experiment with lighting, style, and mood until you find a look that fits your project. We can get to Flow State either by clicking it here in the header, near the top of the screen, or here on the left sidebar under AI Tools. And that brings us here where we can type a prompt in this field at the top to describe what we're looking for. But if you're not really sure what you want yet, you can use some of the other tools here to help you narrow down the scope. For example, under Style, let's click Vibe. And from here, you can choose the overall feel of your campaign. Do you want it to look like it was painted in acrylics, or maybe as a sketch, or maybe with a sci-fi look? For this example, I'll choose Pro Photo. Now, you can also specify some of the other options like lighting, shot type, or color theme. Since this is a fall campaign under color theme, I'll choose Autumn. And you can feel free to browse through some of these other options, but I'll leave those on random for now, so hopefully I'll get a wider variety of looks to consider. For image dimensions, I'll choose 16 by 9, since I want this to look cinematic. And now, let's type a prompt that describes the basics of what I'm going for. Something like, Autumn Coffee Campaign, Warm Natural Light, Rustic Wood Textures, Cozy, and Calm. And let's see what kind of inspiration we get. And now we can browse through all of these images to find something that feels like it fits with what we're going for in this campaign. One of the nice things about Flow State is that it only costs one token per image, so it's pretty inexpensive to use. Even with the 150 tokens you get with a free account, you can generate a lot of inspirational images. So there are a few ways you can use these images that it's generating. Start by finding one that matches or comes close to what you have in mind for the image you want to generate, and select it. As you can see, it says here, from here you can click More Like This to have Flow State generate more images similar to this one. And from these, find some again that come close to or match the vibe you're going for, and download them to your computer. So maybe I like something like this one. I'll click the Download Image button. Now, notice the name of the image is actually a prompt that describes the image. So you could use this text as a prompt to generate a similar image as well. And I'll just browse through here and find some other ones that look close to what I'm going for. Maybe one like this. Kind of like this one. And maybe like this one. Let's close that for a moment. And maybe I'll just find one more. And how about this one? OK. Now, I do like to download my flow state images to my computer so I always have a local copy. But you can also download your favorite flow state images directly to your library just by clicking Save to Library, which can be faster, and it keeps them ready for use later as image references or to copy prompts directly from without having to re-upload anything later. 
All right, so now that I've downloaded some reference images, let's switch to the image generator in Leonardo to come up with the actual image for my campaign. So I'll click here to go back, and we'll choose image. Now we can choose from several different models here to generate images. And you can see how many tokens a prompt will cost you in the prompt field. For example, if I select Nano Banana, I can see that it'll start at 160 tokens. If I switch to Lucid Origin, it's only 66 tokens. Now, some of the older models here, like Phoenix 0.9, only costs 24 tokens. Now, you could use some of the less expensive models here to generate images and ideas, and then switch to one of the more advanced featured models to polish them up. But frankly, it's better to start with one of the top tier models because you're almost guaranteed to get better results right off the bat, which will get you closer to what you want in less time. So for this example, let's go with Lucid Origin to start. It's probably the best model to use to begin creating your imagery, and it's great at producing photorealistic results. And as we just saw here in my case, it starts at just 66 tokens to use. It's also surprisingly strong when it comes to aesthetic and cinematic imagery, not just realism. So whether you're aiming for a lifestyle photo or an ad style composition, or something that feels like a movie still, Lucid Origin is capable of handling all of it with rich lighting and depth. Over here in the sidebar, I'm going to choose 16 by 9 dimensions again, and let's have it generate four options for us from our prompt. Here in the prompt field, I'm going to click the photo button to open up the image guidance menu. This allows us to pick a photo to use as a reference image for the image we're generating. Now, a style reference uses the style from your photo to guide the image generation, while using a photo for a content reference uses the form and content from the photo. So, for example, I'll choose content reference. And here I could upload an image to upload one of the flow state images I downloaded. But the nice thing is when you download images from flow state, they also get added here under your generations. So I'll pick this photo here that looks very close to what I want to generate. And I'll click confirm. And I can click the menu button on the image thumbnail and choose how closely I want my new image to match the reference image. And I'll just leave this on mid. Notice that adding a reference image has only bumped up the cost to 69 tokens. All right, and now let's add a prompt. I want it to be a more detailed prompt to describe the exact image I want to generate. I'm going to keep the same cozy fall theme from my flow state image, but I'll add some specifics like the lighting, depth of field, and overall composition so Leonardo knows how to create something that feels like a professional product photo. So I'll type a steaming cup of coffee on a rustic wooden table beside a window with soft morning light and autumn leaves outside. Cinematic lighting, rich warm tones, 85 millimeter lens, cozy atmosphere, professional product photography. All right, let's generate that and see what we get. All right, and there are our four images, and they all pretty closely match the prompt we used. Now, here's where you want to take some time to evaluate each image. Which ones have the best composition or the more realistic lighting and textures? You also want to look for oddness like distortions, weird reflections, or other things that might jump out. But these all look pretty good to me. And I think the one I want to use is this one here. It has nice natural light and a clean composition. And it's close to what I want for my final image. So I'm going to use this as the base and start refining it from here. Now, once you've selected your base photo, it's a good idea to upscale it before you continue refining it. Upscaling doesn't just make the image larger, but it also enhances the texture and clarity of the image, which makes it more suitable for professional use in graphic design, photography, and so on. So I'll roll over the image, and here in the lower left-hand corner, I'll click the Upscale Image button. And that gives us the Upscale Image window, and we can choose from Ultra, Alchemy, or Other. Generally, Ultra is great for photorealism or close-up shots where you want a clean and detailed look. Alchemy is great for more stylized images like concept art or illustrations. And you will find in some cases, like mine, that the other upscaling options aren't available due to the settings I've used. But that's okay. Let's go with the Ultra settings, since we're going for photorealism. And we can see here that it's going to upscale the resolution of the image from 1920 by 1088 to 3840 by 2176. Now we can change these settings, but I'll leave everything as is. I'll also leave the upscale strength set to mid, as the higher settings sometimes make the image look a little too crisp and polished, but you're free to experiment with these settings all you like. All right, I'll click upscale. 
And after a few seconds, we have our upscaled image that we can now start refining. Now to be safe, I'm gonna click the download button to save a copy to my computer. That way I can always pull that up as the base image again. Now I'll select the image, which brings us into this editing interface. Now we do have some options here on the right, but let's come down to the prompt area at the bottom. Notice the model that's now selected is Nano Banana. Nano Banana strength is precise modifications that don't mess with the other areas of the image. So it's great for adding text or compositing other objects, or even for removing objects you don't want. If you use Photoshop, think of it as Leonardo's version of content-aware editing, where you describe what you want to change in plain language. For example, maybe I like the composition of this image, but I want to change the look of this mug. So I'm going to add a prompt of, make the mug a white glazed ceramic mug. Add a simple elegant logo on the side of the mug that reads Autumn Brew in a warm brown serif font. Make the logo look printed directly on the mug, following its curve and reflections, as if it's part of the glaze. Have a few roasted coffee beans arranged naturally near the mug. Keep the overall lighting, reflections, and warm color tones consistent with the rest of the image. Now we do have the options here to generate multiple images, so let's go with four images again. So we have some options, and I'll click Generate. Now this may take several seconds or several minutes depending on your image and your prompt. While it's working, we can close this and come back out to my main image library. And here we see the four images that it's generated. You can see we have a slightly different looking mug, but it did follow my directions to make it a white ceramic mug. And it put that Autumn Brew logo on the side of the mug. So let's say I'm pretty happy with this one here. But instead of this simple text, maybe I wanna generate a logo instead. So now that I've opened it, we can come back down to the prompt field. And again, using Nano Banana, I'll add the prompt, change the text on the mug to a round vintage coffee logo design that reads Autumn Brew Coffee Co in bold uppercase serif letters around the outer circle with a small steaming coffee mug icon centered inside. The logo should look like a simple rubber stamp print using dark espresso brown ink on a light cream background, slightly faded and textured for a warm handcrafted look. Clean vector style, minimal detail, center composition, no background clutter, and a one-to-one -one square aspect ratio. Let's generate that. And now I'll go back out to the library and we'll see it generating another four images for us. And we'll just jump forward in time to speed this process up a bit. All right, and there are our four new options. So you can see we can keep refining with Nano Banana and the quality of the image remains consistent. For this example, let's say I'm pretty happy with this particular image. So next we can bring it to life by turning it into a short video using the tools in Leonardo that make it easy to take this exact image we just created and animate it with natural movements or camera motions. Now, before we move on to video, it is a good idea to upscale the image one more time. Even if you've already upscaled earlier, doing it again after your final Nano Banana edits ensures you're generating the video from the highest resolution version possible, which again gives you a clearer, sharper final animation. So again, we'll roll over the image you want to use, click Upscale Image, I'll leave the default settings and you can see how much it's going to be upscaled. And we'll just do that. And there it is. Now let's go back to the main Leonardo app screen. And here I'll select video. For the model, let's choose Kling 2.5 Turbo. It's currently the best for taking any still image and generating smooth cinematic motion from it, which can be perfect for turning a static image into a social media clip or a product teaser. I'll click the image button in the prompt field, and here I'm gonna choose start frame, and then navigate to the images I generated, and select the one we were just working with. This tells the model that this is the image we want the animation to begin with. And then we'll type our prompt. Now, especially for video, it's important to be as detailed as possible with your prompt, since we're dealing with animation and camera motion. So I'm gonna paste in a prompt I previously arrived at with some trial and error. Feel free to pause and read it since it's kind of long and I'm not gonna read the whole thing out loud here. But basically, I want a hand holding a French press full of coffee to enter the shot and top off the mug. And because this is a fairly detailed prompt and animation, I'm gonna come over here and switch the duration from five seconds to 10 seconds. Otherwise, the AI will have trouble making the actions look natural. All right, so we'll generate that. Now, because we're generating a video, this will take a little longer. So while it's thinking, let me show you some of the shots I had problems with when I was testing this earlier. So in this one, for example, watch how the logo on the cup changes to gibberish. 
This happens because AI video models like Kling don't actually track every pixel from the original image. Instead, they regenerate each frame from scratch based on your still image and motion prompt. The model sees the logo as just a pattern of shapes and colors, not as readable text, so those tiny details shift a little with every frame. Now, this won't necessarily happen every time, but definitely keep an eye out for things like this. In the future, this will most likely be fixed when AIs are better at tracking actual pixels, along with understanding what the words in the pixels say. But for now, I had to change my prompt to keep the cup stable, and I wrote in the idea of a French press coming in to add coffee to the cup. Now, in this other shot, I experimented with having some hands come into the shot to pick up the mug, but as you'll see, I wasn't specific enough in my details, so I got this result, which is kind of hilarious. But you'll notice that the text actually stayed pretty stable until that third hand came in and covered it. So even though the mug was moving at the beginning here, the logo and the text stayed stable. It was only when that weird other hand came in that things got even weirder. But anyway, I had to do some experimenting to come up with the right prompt, and I also had to modify my ideas a bit to land on an animation that the AI could best handle. All right, let's go back to Leonardo. So there it is. It's done, and this is pretty much exactly what I asked for in the prompt. But again, keep in mind that when it comes to animation, you probably will have to spend some extra time and tokens to coax the results you want out of the AI model. But what started as a few quick brainstorming ideas where we had no particular image that we started with has now given us a high-resolution static image, as well as an animated version complete with branding and motion that could easily work for a polished ad or a social media post. What I really like about Leonardo is that it gives you so much creative control all in one place. You can generate your ideas, create professional looking shots, refine and brand them, and even add cinematic motion without ever leaving the platform. So it's not about replacing creativity, but instead is about giving you the tools so you have more ways to explore your creativity. And of course, you're also free to download anything you've generated in Leonardo and take them into other apps of your choice to continue working with them. If you want to try any of this yourself, just head to leonardo.ai to sign up for a free account and start experimenting with your own projects. If you found this helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more AI-powered creative tutorials. So until next time, I'm Garrick. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.